Jesus had washed their feet and put his garment back on and reclined at table, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and the teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. Amen, amen, I say to you. No slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. So the question is, why salve? Yeah, if we at BC are saying the same thing. Why salve? <laughs> but it really is the question. Why salve? You can't come here as a student. You can't come here as a staff member or administrator. You can't want to be here as a faculty member. You can't have been an alum unless you ask the question, why salve? Why do I want to come here? Now, I'm not so naive, nor am I so arrogant to think that there's one answer for why you come to Salve. Sometimes it's location, quite clearly. Other times it's legacy, could be financial, particular course of study. But all of those answers are phenomenological by nature. They're based on a particular relationship. However, I would contend the Sisters of Mercy who founded this institution in 1934 knew a greater existential reason for why salve. Why salve for them was born out of faith in God, the person of Jesus Christ, and the scriptures. You see, those of us in higher education today, or at least a few of us, have come to realize education has changed. Today's students see education in a particular segment of our society as simply a rite of passage. I have to go to college. Then there's another group of students, usually driven by their parents, that see going to college or an education as a way of getting a job. What parent hasn't fallen unbelievably sad when they've heard that their child is going to study religious studies? You can't make a living out of that. I have not paid for you to go to get religious studies. Education has become a destination. That, that is not how the Sisters of Mercy understand education. I dare say that's not how the Catholic intellectual, in, intellectual tradition understands education. For the Sisters of Mercy, I think, it's a whole lot simpler. And I defer to the Sisters of Mercy because I'm not one. But I have an idea that for the Sisters of Mercy, education was, re was a response to God's love. That simple. Love itself. Because at the very kernel of love is mercy. It's a response to God's love. We should educate. And in that response to God's love, to educate out of mercy, it's to fulfill the needs of the human family, crying out for help. It's to fulfill the potential of every human being that comes across this doorstep to maximize who they are and to develop into the person God has dreamt them to be. A mercy education, in my contention, is about living life, living life. I think the readings that we heard are the foundation of a mercy education. Did you notice Micah? Justice and mercy, justice and mercy. We hear a lot of talk today about justice and there's need for justice, right relationship. We can all think about things just by reading the paper that needs to be fixed. Justice is imperative, but without mercy, 
people lose dignity in that battle. Without mercy, civility is lost. Without mercy, polarization results and nothing gets accomplished. It sounds a little bit about maybe what's happening nowadays. And what about that Galatians reading? Action, you got to do something that says in Galatians. You got to do it. Action with mercy. Sometimes we get busy. We just do things for the sake of doing them. But if you have a mercy education, you start to realize mercy is empathy. So you act out of your empathy, feeling the need of the population around you, the people around you. What needs to be done? Where can I fill in the gap? And action then is a response to the needs of those around you. And that Gospel of John, so beautiful. It's the inversion of power. Oh, so many people, they, wanna, they want an education so they can become the CEO, the president. They want a title. But if you have a mercy education, you realize the inversion of power. Power is for service. Power is to give away. Power is to empower others to move up in life. A mercy education is done for the sake of servant leadership. So that when a graduate from this university goes out in the world, there's a chance that others who are less fortunate can be raised up. The power is shared and given away. That's mercy education. That's salve education. That's a noble cause that should inspire everyone. So who's responsible for the mission here? Who's responsible for this mercy education? Who's going to do that and watch justice with mercy, action with mercy, servant leadership out of a response for love? Who's going to do that? Well, it's the president. You're the chief mission officer. That's your job. And you know what, folks? I believe Kelly, ooh, I didn't mean that, excuse me. Madam President, <laughs> Dr. Armstrong, I believe you, in many ways, embody mercy education. I think, to be quite honest with you, my friend Kelly has found her true home, and that's hard for me to say, being a BC guy. That Kelly has found her true home at Salve. You see, her very nature is to be just with mercy. Her very nature is to act out of mercy. And if you've known her for only five minutes, she is a servant leader who will get up from the table, put the apron around her own waist, roll up her sleeves, and get dirty in the work of making compassion and education real. You see, for my friend, Dr. Armstrong, education is about maximizing the human potential. It's about access for the marginalized. It's about advancement for all people. I believe Kelly was called here. I believe that this university on the edge of the ocean beckoned her. I believe because of who she is and what she is and what this institution is, she was called here to be fed by Salve. I believe that she came here because she is this woman committed to justice and mercy, action and mercy, servant leadership, and she knew that with you, she could be fed. But if I can be so bold as to tell you, I think what you'll find is she'll be fed here and then she'll inspire. 
She'll inspire you. She'll inspire the students. She'll inspire the neighbors. She'll inspire all around to join in in this movement of justice and mercy, action and mercy, and servant leadership. I think this was a match made in heaven. And I'll end with that. A match made in heaven. We're standing at the table where we'll be fed by God, the bread of life, Jesus. So we end where we start. This inauguration, everything that's going to happen today started with this mass. I dare say and I contend existentially that's how the Sisters of Mercy brought it about, through their faith, through their nourishment at the table, through their scriptures and their love in response to a God who was calling them to lead. That's where we find ourselves today. But for Dr. Armstrong, for every student that's here, for every alum that went here, and for every one of you that work here as staff, administrator, or faculty, the question is no longer, why salve? You've answered it. Kelly, you've answered it. Now it's a resounding yes, salve. Everyone that walks through these doors and everyone that comes through our curriculum, they'll be people of justice with mercy for a world crying out for it. Yes, every person that comes to this school to have the privilege and the chance to be educated will be people of action that listen to their heart and act out of empathy so that all can have a better life. And yes, the latest numbers are 7% of the world gets a college education. 7% of the world, by the mere fact that you have a college education, a salve education, you're going to be a leader. What kind of leader are your students? Are you going to be? And the answer is quite simple. We're going to be servant leaders. We're going to take off our jackets and our coats. We're going to put on our aprons and we're going to go into the real world. And we're going to manifest what it's like to respond to God's love by being God's love. So, here's my plea. When this inauguration is done, when this Mass is done, you at Salve, all of us, but you at Salve and you, Kelly, will have to make sure this happens. You're impelled now to go forth from here, starting with Dr. Armstrong's administration on the shoulders of the Sisters of Mercy, to make mercy real in this world, to make it real and tangible how you interact with people, your colleagues, what you do, how you prioritize your life to make it real, to make mercy real in every form. My folks, it's important. The world's banking on you. God has commissioned you. And we at BC are more than willing to give up our friend whom we love to you because we know she'll make it happen and God's will will be done. <laughs> You're the chief mission officer. That's your job. And you know what, folks? I believe Kelly, ooh, I didn't mean that, excuse me. Madam President, <laughs> Dr. Armstrong, I believe you, in many ways, embody mercy education. I think, to be quite honest with you, my friend Kelly has found her true home, and that's hard for me to say, being a BC guy, that Kelly has found her true home at Salve. You see, her very nature is to be just with mercy. Her very nature is to act out of mercy. And if you've known her for only five minutes, she is a servant leader who will get up from the table, 
put the apron around her own waist, roll up her sleeves, and get dirty in the work of making compassion and education real. You see, for my friend, Dr. Armstrong, education is about maximizing the human potential. It's about access for the marginalized. It's about advancement for all people. I believe Kelly was called here. I believe that this university on the edge of the ocean beckoned her. I believe because of who she is and what she is and what this institution is, she was called here to be fed by Salve. I believe that she came here because she is this woman committed to justice and mercy, action and mercy, servant leadership, and she knew that with you, she could be fed. But if I can be so bold as to tell you, I think what you'll find is she'll be fed here and then she'll inspire. She'll inspire you, she'll inspire the students, she'll inspire the neighbors, she'll inspire all around to join in in this movement of justice and mercy, action and mercy, and servant leadership. I think this was a match made in heaven. And I'll end with that. A match made in heaven. We're standing at the table where we'll be fed by God, the bread of life, Jesus. So we end where we start. This inauguration, everything that's going to happen today started with this mass. I dare say and I contend existentially that's how the Sisters of Mercy brought it about through their faith, through their nourishment at the table, through their scriptures and their love in response to a God who was calling them to lead. That's where we find ourselves today. But for Dr. Armstrong, for every student that's here, for every alum that went here, and for every one of you that work here as staff, administrator, or faculty, the question is no longer why salve? You've answered it. Kelly, you've answered it. Now it's a resounding yes, salve. Everyone that walks through these doors and everyone that comes through our curriculum, they'll be people of justice with mercy for a world crying out for it. Yes, every person that comes to this school to have the privilege and the chance to be educated will be people of action that listen to their heart and act out of empathy so that all can have a better life. And yes, the latest numbers are 7% of the world gets a college education. 7% of the world, by the mere fact that you have a college education, a salve education, you're going to be a leader. What kind of leader are your students? Are you going to be? And the answer is quite simple. We're going to be servant leaders. We're going to take off our jackets and our coats. We're going to put on our aprons and we're going to go into the real world. And we're going to manifest what it's like to respond to God's love by being God's love. So, here's my plea. When this inauguration is done, when this mass is done, you at Salve, all of us, but you at Salve and you, Kelly, will have to make sure this happens. You're impelled now to go forth from here, starting with Dr. Armstrong's administration on the shoulders of the Sisters of Mercy to make mercy real in this world, to make it real and tangible. How you interact with people, your colleagues, what you do, how you prioritize your life to make it real, to make mercy real in every form. My folks, it's important. The world's banking on you. God has commissioned you. And we at BC are more than willing to give up our friend whom we love to you because we know she'll make it happen.
and God's will will be done.